Okay, the message today uh, will be given by Christina Carty and Alison Watson. All right. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm first. <laughs> 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 you guys remember when Jada was down there? I feel like <laughs> so old, you know? <laughs> Sorry Jada, you know, I just had to do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go to the city. At the beginning of every new year, and makes the celebration, we all make that age-old declaration. New year, new me. New year, gonna hit the gym. New year, it's time to clean all the junkyard in the closet. New year, a more patient me. New year, I will be at church every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so the new year gets her. We're right. New Year, you get where I'm going with this. But by the time the third week of the year starts, we can't bother going to the gym. The closet gets about two inches high out with all the junk. What's happening? But just because we abandon these goals, most times, merely due to the ins and outs of a hectic day, that doesn't mean we don't want to achieve them. It then leads us to the question, how important is goal setting? A goal can best be described as a desired result, a person, or a system in visions, plans, and commits to achieve a personal and or organizational desired endpoint in some sort of assumed development. When we break it down, we can isolate three keywords, envision, plan, and commit. Therefore, in setting that goal, the process will clearly involve us envisioning and zoning in on the desired goal, planning how to attain this goal, and of course committing to actualizing the goal. We can therefore relate the functions of the process of setting goals to a vehicle. So I thought about this one. So firstly, our entire being, who we are, is the vehicle. Our drive and determination is the engine of the vehicle of our person, pushing and moving us on our journey towards our goal. Our mind is our gas pedals and brakes, accelerating and decelerating the inflow of positive and negative thoughts respectively. So we accelerate the positive and we just pause the negative. So I'll say that one again. Our mind is our gas pedal and brakes, accelerating and decelerating with the inflow of positive and negative thoughts, respectively. However, one of the most crucial aspects of our vehicle is the steering wheel, which is, of course, goal setting. Goal setting directs the movement of our being onwards towards our destination. That God given ability allows us to move in any direction we need to go, swerve from many obstacles, or simply remain on track straight ahead towards the destination. Our ability to set goals is likened to a steering wheel as it is crucial to remember that we are in control of the path that we take. With divine wisdom and guidance as a global positioning system, <laughs> we have the ability to guide ourselves towards our goal and steer us in the direction that will best lead us there. Our vision. Now, this is not just our eyesight. Our vision would be our windshield. What we're seeing straight ahead. Sorry. What we envision for our future where and when we see ourselves attaining that goal we embarked upon. At times, visibility may get poor, as just with fog or rain, there are obstacles in our lives. However, our vision is nothing without faith. Knowing that the goal we set out to achieve can be and will be attained is all the vision that we need, despite whatever may be ahead. Just as in the story of Florence Chadwick. When she looks ahead, 
Lawrence Chadwick saw nothing but a solid wall of fog. Her body wasn't done. She had been swimming for nearly 16 hours. Already, she was the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions. She had managed to finish that swim in a record time, 16 hours and 22 minutes on August 8, 1950. Now, at age 34, her goal was to become the first woman to swim from Catalina Island to Palos Verde on the California coast. On that 4th of July morning in 1952, the sea was like an ice bath, ice bath, and the fog was so dense she could hardly see her support boats. Sharks cruised toward her lone figure only to be driven away by rifle shots. Against the frigid grip of the sea, she struggled on, hour after hour, while millions watched on national television. Alongside Florence in one of these boats was her mother and her trainer, who offered encouragement. They told her that it wasn't much further, but all she could see was fog. They urged her not to quit. She never had, until then. With only a half mile to go, she asked to be pulled out. Still flying her chilled body several hours later, she told a reporter, look, I'm not excusing myself, but I could have seen, if I could have seen land, I might have made it. It was not fatigue or even the cold water that defeated her. It was the fog. She was unable to see her goal. Two months later, she tried again. This time, despite the same dense fog, she swam with her faith intact and her goal clearly pictured in her mind. She knew that somewhere behind that fog was an act, and this time, she made it. Florence Chadwick became the first woman to swim the Catalina, eclipsing the men's record by two hours. Go power. <laughs> When goal setting, we clearly set up our minds and our hearts to achieve the goals we set and the good stemming from it. We are receptive to divine guidance, knowing in faith that what we desire is already ours. And in that moment, we find the inspiration and the drive to advance towards our goal or heart's desire. The second grain said, I'm afraid if I put down roots in the ground, I don't know where they will where they will end up. If I grow tender stems, they may be broken, damaged by the wind. If I grow flowers, they may be disrupted. So I, I'd rather wait for a safer time. Thus the second grain was waiting until the chicken passed by. <laughs> and well, you can guess the rest of that story. <laughs> I was asked to speak today on the topic of the benefits of goal setting. Thanks so much to my Temple of Light family and to Carmen, Reverend John Scott, everybody else who asked me to be here today. It is my pleasure and an honor to participate in Youth Sunday. I hope to do two things with this little talk. The first one is to help the youth understand, and that, that, that means all of us, right? The youth. Is. It is just a number. So to help us understand why goal setting for our lives is so important, and number two, share some ideas to help all of us set excellent goals for ourselves. Goal setting is a form of planning, and we've got several definitions of goal setting and what a goal is, but it's a form of planning, and all planning is geared towards what? Success. All planning is geared towards success. Now, the single most important aspect of success for all of us is making our lives what we want it to be. 
the how is not standard for everybody. It's personal. Your life, your dreams, the design you give it, the dreams you accomplish, making your life what you want it to be. That's what's important. There's only one way to get that. Setting clear goals and achieving them. That's the reality. When I was a youth, like you know, most, of, most of you, a long, long time ago, I thought I had, yeah, I thought I had all the time in the world to set some goals and to achieve them. Boy, was I wrong. I also always knew I wanted to be somebody. Now that I am not so young, I realize I should have been more specific. <laughs> like a lot of us in this room, right? On a more serious note, folks, to use the words of Marcus Aurelius, you, your days are numbered. Use them to throw open the windows of your soul to the sun. If you do not, the sun will soon set, and you with it. Most people are satisfied with mediocre lives, and that's okay, but personally, I am not interested in anything mediocre. I want to talk to all the youth in this audience who are interested in living extraordinary lives. Who is interested in that? Here, here. And with you. So for you. Here's a couple of reasons you should set some goals for your lives. Number one, goals give you direction. Setting a goal is like having a road map. The airplane has a route set out for it. It, it, it has a planned route to follow in order to arrive at its destination. Wind, weather conditions, all of those things can affect the airplane's course. However, knowing the exact destination allows the pilot to reset, make the proper adjustments, and arrive at the destination safely. So it is with personal goals. With a clear-cut goal, you know exactly where you are heading, and you can always correct your course if you veer off a little bit. You can have all the potential in the world, and this goes for all the really, really young people, a little younger than I am in this room. You can have all the potential in the world, and I'm qualified to speak on this. But without focus, your abilities and talents are useless. I like to use the example of the sun, when you use a magnifying glass and you hold it on a piece of paper for it to burn. Everybody knows that experiment. We all did that in prep and primary schools. If you don't focus that light, with the sun's rays, it's not going anywhere. It is never gonna burn. That's the way it is with goals. You really must have a focus. The famous actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was not, everybody knows who he is? Yeah, yeah. He was not that famous in 1976 when he met with a newspaper reporter. The reporter asked him, now that you're retired from bodybuilding, what do you plan to do next? Schwarzenegger answered very calmly and confidently, I'm going to be the number one movie star in Hollywood. <laughs> the reporter was shocked and a little amused at Schwarzenegger's plan. At that time, it was very hard to imagine how this muscle-bound bodybuilder, who was not a professional actor and who, as most of you remember, spoke poor English with a very strong Austrian accent, could ever hope to be Hollywood's number one movie star. So the reporter asked him how he planned to make that dream come true. Schwarzenegger replied, I'll do it the same way I became the number one bodybuilder in the world. What I did was to create a vision of who I want to be, then I started living like that person in my mind, as if it were already true. Sounds, sounds almost childish, yeah? And simple. But it works. Arnold Schwarzenegger did become the number one highest paid movie star in Hollywood. In the words of the great Zig Ziglar, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. <laughs> On to goal setting number two. Goals have a way of holding us accountable for failure, or similarly help us to recognize and celebrate success. Andrew Carnegie may be the most influential philanthropist in American history. Anybody, everybody knows who he is? In 1919, when Andrew Carnegie died, a handwritten note was found in his desk drawer. He wrote the note when he was a young man. It contained his primary lifetime goal. The note read, I will spend the first half of my life earning a fortune, and the second half of my life giving it all away. Guess what Andrew Carnegie did with the first half of his life? Earned a fortune. Guess what he did with the second half of his life? He gave it all away. If you don't write down concrete goals and give yourself a timeline for achievement, 
how can you look back and make an assessment, evaluate whether you failed or if you are being successful? Like Sebastian pointed out, the importance of writing it down. In many ways, folks, life is like a vacation. Although for us adults, sometimes it really doesn't feel like one. But the truth is, we are given a finite amount of time to pursue the experiences we want. And then, before you know it, it's time to go. If you want to get the most out of your precious moments in life, you have to know what you want. I want to share uh, my personal experience with you. I went to Disney World at the beginning of this summer uh, for the first time. Um, and I learned very quickly that it's important to decide what you want or you won't get it. If you've ever been to Disney World, you know it's really, people talk about how big it is. It's called Disney World. It is huge, right? But I get there first day, and I'm an amateur, I'm figuring, leave from my hotel. I mean, how big can it be? I can go over there and check it out and see and make some assessments about what I want to see and so on. Bad idea. I left the hotel, I went over day one, I walked for hours, I was hot, I was sweaty, I was tired, and because I hadn't planned on good for anything, I really and truly, even though I saw everything, I experienced absolutely nothing. I went back to my hotel, like distraught. Good thing we had three days. I just sat down. Day two, I was no longer an amateur. Track shoes on, bus pad paper, booking, pay, booking marker, water bottle in hand, knapsack, sun visor, spray bottle, fast car ready. I had booked myself onto everything that was available enough. I was ready for them. I went into Disney World. <laughs> I got on some rides all the time. That's the difference between planning and not planning. Planning is important. Of course, folks, I'm not suggesting that you have to plan every single moment of your life. After all, what's a vacation without a little serenity? Even your destination may change as you travel down life's road. But without a clear sense of what you want to do and where you want to go, you will never be able to live life to its best. Now for the second part of what I want to share. How to set goals for your life that you actually want. I like to think of goal setting activity, like some of my colleagues here, like sharpening an ax to cut down a big tree. You have the tools and you prepare it, right? And you get the job done. Story of two woodcutters. Same goal, different methods. One day two woodcutters had a bet. Which of them will cut down more wood during a day? In the morning, the two men took up their positions. First, they worked at one speed, but in an hour, one of them had heard that the other one stopped cutting trees. Realizing that this was his chance, the first woodcutter started to cut trees with double efforts. Ten minutes passed, and he heard the second woodcutter start to work again. They were working almost synchronously. When the first woodcutter heard that his opponent had stopped again, the first woodcutter continued working, feeling the smell of victory. This lasted all day. Each hour, one of the woodcutters stopped for 10 minutes, and the other one continued to work. When the time had expired, the first woodcutter, who worked without stopping, was absolutely sure that he had won the prize. He was very surprised to know that he was mistaken. How did that happen, he asked his partner. Each hour I heard you have stopped the work for 10 minutes. How could you cut more trees than I did? It's impossible. It's very simple. In fact, answered the second woodcutter. Each hour I stopped the work for 10 minutes, and when you were cutting the trees, I was sharpening the axe. <laughs> it is commonly accepted, folks, that setting goals will lead you to success. Many high achievers reach their goals, um, but they end up missing their lives in the process. You know, a lot of us will reach our goals and discover that they were the wrong, wrong goals and sometimes the wrong path to get there. Here's my two cents, finally, on how to set things right for the goals you actually want. Number one, set goals for the right reasons. The first step to setting a goal that will bring, the first step is setting a goal that will bring you an awesome life. Not money, not power. Most goals are about a destination. People say, I want a million dollars, I want enlightenment, I want a truck. If you tend to set your goals based on the destination and don't consider the journey, Try switching that around. Number two, choose a goal to create a journey. Instead of setting life goals as we say all the time, think about setting a life direction. Figure out the things that will create a fun, meaningful, compelling journey for yourself. Ask yourself, 
how do I want to spend my time? What daily activities make me want to leap out of bed? What do I want to learn? Who do I want to hang out with? Who do I want to talk with? Who do I want to collaborate with? Now set your goal. Choose one that will create the journey you just designed. Number three, if the goal doesn't work, change it. It's your life. As you can see, the goal is really just a way of making sure that we take a meaningful journey. Some journeys are so much fun. People talk about their job like, it is not work. A close friend of mine sitting in the audience is a tennis coach. He teaches, especially children. When we just met, I asked him about retirement, you know, and his, his response was something like, why, why would I retire? <laughs> what I do is it work, it's pure fun. I've thought about that a lot. It's a really good approach to what we do with our lives. In closing, your goal is there to shape your life. The life that delights you, not the one that enslaves you. If the pursuit of the goal is draining your life, why keep it? We adopt goals for one reason and one reason only, to change our lives, to influence it, to make it better, to improve. Choose the journey that will be awesome for you. The activities, the personal growth experiences, the friends. Then choose the goal that acts as a compass and gives you that life as part of the journey. And if you ever feel the direction needs changing, change goals. Because it's not about where you end up, it's about the life you live on the way. Your life is too precious to settle for anything less than extraordinary. <laughs>